Broadcast Network, After Buzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries, and your number one source for after show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind-the-scenes exclusives. All thanks to E! Entertainment's Maria Menounos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Mm. Mm. Hey! Fire. 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 Every time. Come on. <laughs> Let's hear it. Come on, man. Let's go. <laughs> Fire. Yes. There we go. Had What's up, everybody? Welcome. Welcome. So excited to be here. I am your host, Lynn Gonzalez. And as always, you are here for the one and only Hell's Kitchen after show. Of course, I'm never here by myself. I always have some wonderful people with me. To my direct left is my boy, Jeff Thurn. Tell him what's up. What's up, guys? It's been a few weeks. Yeah. Glad to be back. Glad to be back. Glad to be back. And on top of that, we have an extra special guest. Uh, you might know this guy because he's kind of famous. Um, like 1.5 million followers on YouTube. Uh, he's a competitive eater. All around bad, bad mamma jamma. Mr. Furious Pete, tell him what's up. What's up? Yeah! Thanks for me. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited. I'm so yeah. glad to have you here. Yeah, thanks. For I mean, it's me. like perfect. Like Hell's Kitchen, competitive eating. It's like goes hand perfect. in hand, right? Yeah, I think so. For yeah, sure. For I think sure. so. I think so. Totally. So, um, as always, you know, we like to start the episode um, with what happens at the beginning, and um, I thought this was very endearing um, because the person who I would least imagine to um, write a love note. Would be Frank. I one thousand percent disagree with you. Really? Yes. I mean, but he's like the machismo dude. Like he's the one. No, that, no, no. He's that the, guy's got some emotional problems. He's got. So he's think, the uh, sweet little like. You think so? He yeah. writes love letters to every girlfriend. He falls in love on the first date. He is like writing you love letters. I totally on, agree. On like pink paper with like red <laughs> cursive, like. Hearts over the eyes. No. I don't. I can't. I can't. This is not it. the first love letter he's ever written. Okay. So, but uh, but again, again, I Sorry. still <laughs> think no. I mean that's fine. You can disagree <laughs> with me. I just was very shocked that he did it. I'm just that's that's me because he's the Guido. He's the macho dude, Italian stallion, whatever you want to call him. And so when he writes this love note, he was like really trying to be endearing. And yeah, I'm like, was. and obviously I was like, it's not gonna work because it's frank right. yeah you know um and don't don't forget about that handoff right <laughs> <laughs> that oh was just the most awkward God. thing it ever was, i mean it was, i don't know i don't know what he was i mean what do you think his motive was like what do you think he was going to get out of that that's my thing i think he just wanted to get he thought mentally he thought that he was going to get on his good side that uh -huh. you know there's just like oh man this guy really loves me i'm, I'm not going to kick him off that, that i think that's what he was thinking inside so his head he that was... gordon's going to be like wow this guy's gonna be my favorite now and i'm going to give him a chance or something like that that's what i think he wanted to like get from gordon I, so I you think, think like it was damage control basically he, i think so yeah. i think so yeah okay. i kind of want to genuinely believe that he just like wanted to show his gratitude he, really? he his his really? life got saved the week before. Part of me thinks like, you know, he, just, he his his way of ex he, a normal person. Ster I mean, not normal. But Sterling gave mm -hmm. him a hug. Right. Like Frank, you know, wrote a love letter. Like that's just his way of showing it. <laughs> really, I think it's really hard to judge based on his character in the kitchen, especially yeah. this past episode yeah, where right, it was yeah, just yeah. like nothing was going right. Yeah, no, he was he was really bad. And the thing is, and I think I agree with Pete. I think he was doing damage control. Yeah. I think he was saved. And, you know, I think he was trying to basically say, okay, what I got to do is I'm going to write a note that's going to kind of give me some cushion. So if I do mess up, which he did, of course, um, it's going to, you know, kind of help me out, which I'm thinking this is Chef Gordon Ramsay. You know, maybe if it was somebody that was like all about hearts mm -hmm. and flowers and something like that. But this is a dude that every other word is the F-bomb. Yeah, I especially can't on the show. Right. I can't see him. You know, not that he wouldn't respect it, but at the same token, I can see him like saves the love notes for like Rachel Ray exactly. and Giada, exactly. yeah. not Gordon, like yeah. not Gordon. So that's my take on it. But 
Anyway, um, and Frank, if you're listening, I know you've watched the show before. <laughs> I mean, we love you, but we do love you. Yeah, we love your love notes. He, um, we, we, he, uh, <laughs> we've tweeted back and forth a few times about uh, some of the things we've said on the show. Is that about right? Him. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, he's awesome. Me awesome. I did forget to mention we do have another special guest. She's not on camera, but she is with us, looking very beautiful. Miss Mel Diva is in the house. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like newly it. engaged. I like it. What? Newly engaged. Yes. Oh, I didn't even know that. Yeah, that's dope. Yeah, oh, look at that. Shoot. Yeah, we got them celebrating. You can have Frank write your nuptials. <laughs> yeah, that's what I think. She's Frank, probably, she's nuptials, probably, man. No offense, Frank, but she'll probably leave me after <laughs> yeah. the letters you write, man. <laughs> probably so. You're like, this garbage? Yeah, what is here. this? <laughs> that's that's hilarious. All right, so um, with this time, uh, it was interesting because, as we know, usually the start of the show, they have uh, the challenge. Um, but he did something different this time is he actually said what the prize was going to be before uh, the actual challenge. And the reason why he said that is because it was a trip to Vegas, which obviously is an amazing time. And it was the first overnight trip. The first overnight trip of the season. He does you normally do this every season at some point in the game. Mm -hmm. um, but this was the first time he did this. Uh, and it, it does, they do kind of switch it up. You know, sometimes they go and they see one of the uh, old contestants that maybe have won or what mm -hmm. have you. Uh, but this particular time, it was all about having fun in Vegas. Um, and the challenge pertained to exactly. the, the trip. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Which craps. was Hell's Kitchen craps. Uh, awesome. Which those of you who gamble and do craps, I, I don't. So I'm not sure exactly how the game works. Maybe, Pete? It's, it's definitely a lot different. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you would see this kind of game on The Price is Right. I think they, I, I mean, they had something like that on there. Right. But, uh, but, but I mean, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a little right. bit different, obviously. But, you know, same table. There's a right. dice, whatever. So, I mean, uh, yeah, it's Hell's Kitchen variation. Of but craps. in normal craps, what is really the goal in craps? You want to you wanna hit a certain number. Number. Okay. Yeah, here it was That's a on the table. All, yeah, okay. the, the ones that you're betting on and everything like that. Got it. Yeah, got yeah. it. So with this one, they kind of did a variation, which I think is a good thing you say. Price is right. right. Totally. Yeah. It was very, very reminiscent of that. Shout out to Bob Barker. Um, but they uh, had basically letters on these die, you know, that had a lot of different shapes or octagon, whatever triangles going on, and they would roll it out, and basically they had to whatever letter it fall, fell on, whoever was at the table at the time, they had to say what uh, a food that they wanted to add as an ingredient mm -hmm. to make the dish um, that they were all gonna make. And so uh, it got kind of tricky because you're sitting there and I could kind of, you know, in this particular case, I could kind of empathize with them because it is a lot of pressure. Yeah. You roll this die, you have a certain amount of time. Yeah. I think it's like 10 seconds, right? Yeah. And they have to kind of figure out like in that time frame, and you get a letter like, you know, X, you know, which wasn't on there, Obviously, but yeah. you know, you get, you get a letter that maybe you're not too familiar with and you're thinking like, what can I make? What can right. I make? Because you can't just say whatever comes to mind because it might be something you can really can't work with. Exactly. Yeah. So De definitely from a viewer's perspective, it was a lot easier than right. you know being right. on the spot and you'd be all nervous and everything. So. What'd you say? Xanthum. Xanthum gum. Oh, if it's, a, if it's X. See? Oh, that's a thickener. That, yeah, yeah, exactly. That would actually, be, that actually work, work pretty wow. well. That would work yeah. if they had X, but, no but nobody would think of that. No one would think no, of that. There's just no way. Xylophone. Oh, yeah. Now yeah, you got to put a xylophone in your dish. All right. Musical for The ingredients chosen were the only six ingredients you could use. So Correct. even if you came up with something random, like you couldn't substitute it but in. You could you use spices use in it? I was confused. Like well, pepper, the way salt. I got it is that you had, whatever it was, you had to use all of those ingredients. You could add spices to mm. it to yeah. doctor the dish, yeah. but you couldn't leave any ingredients out. Because that would be pretty bland. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. They were talking about how salty one of the dishes yeah. were. Right, right. Sure. Or trying so to yeah, I took it as all of those you had to incorporate yeah. somehow in the dish, yep. which they did. So. Um, the red team actually said some, they had some some bad ones. They, yeah. uh, the Latasha said, you know, had, had L, so she said lime. Yeah. Uh, and then Sterling, what does he say? Lemon. Lemon of course. <laughs> We're trying to make Sprite here. What's going on? <laughs> um, and then uh, Frank, pine nuts. Frank, yeah. what are you doing? Like, pine nuts? I know. Like, of all things to think of, I would not, I mean, and I'm not a chef by any means. I do love this show. You know, I, I'm a wannabe, you know, hood cook or whatever at home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But pine nuts, though? Like, I mean, I mean I unless it was from. an Italian. Italian dish and you're you know trying to create some kind of pasta then obviously you're trying to create something fresh with pine. I love pine nuts you do I love cooking with them to be honest uh -huh. but there isn't that much you can do with it especially since you already knew he had duck right there right. and all this other stuff so right. I don't know it just yeah <laughs> hey Mel I don't get it give us a letter <laughs> and then we're gonna have to come up with <laughs> what food we would cook K K um kale kale oh that's good, good. One. that's good um, kangaroo. Oh, that'd be delicious. Right? 
Um, Do you think they'd have that on hand, though? I, no, I don't think so. <laughs> I doubt it. Kumquat start with a K? Does it? It does? I don't know. Oh, ding, 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 ding. Yeah. All right. So we'd have a dish made with kangaroo, kumquats, kumquats. and kale. That actually might be kind of gangster. Might be okay. Might Some be... kind of salad. You yeah. Know? Just yeah. like yeah. thinly Slide, slice the yes, kangaroo. Slice. Yeah. I've had those... kangaroo. Kangaroo is pretty bomb. Yeah, it's great. It's pretty bomb. I like I like, have you had it before? I have not had a kangaroo. Yeah, it's bomb. It's yeah. bomb. You should get that in your life. I'm just telling you. So the blue team basically ended up winning this challenge, hands down. And it's funny because no wasn't it the red team uh no it was the red team i'm yeah, sorry yeah, i'm sorry i'm jumping the gun yeah uh the blue team you know yeah, won the final. later on exactly but it was Boy, interesting <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> it was interesting because i guess what i was trying to say is the blue team was very confident in their dish that's what it was they're very confident in what they were going to make because their ingredients seemed to be very cohesive mm -hmm. uh whereas the red team like we know you know they had the lemon the lime the pine nuts it wasn't very cohesive you know what were you going to do with that um, so they go to make it, and I actually thought originally that they had to make it all together, but Me they too. actually yeah, they ended made, up making yeah, their own. making yeah. separate dishes, and then they had to choose one uh, at the end, which I don't think they knew. I think they know that I thought it was going to taste each one. Right. So they had to pick somebody, and it's interesting because you know Sade is a recent transplant over to the red team. She's been on the blue team. She was kind of running things over oh, there. On the red team, mm -hmm. transplant to the blue team. Yeah, to the blue team. Yeah, and so she actually gets hers overlooked uh which is interesting because i thought she's pretty vocal you know she doesn't you know care about speaking her mind she kind of does you know says what's on her what she wants to say and in this particular regard she was kind of saying oh my dish you guys taste my dish but they were kind of overlooking it now do you think that they saw that because they don't respect her as a chef or yes. do you think it was more or less uh you know they felt well, like you know she was doing too much we've talked about this before and the blue team has a lot of ego as is so you already Seems have way, yeah. Brian right. overpowering everybody mm -hmm. you know Fernando has always done a good job and so people trust him and the blue team I think that they're starting to know who the better people are mm -hmm. and then Sade comes and she doesn't necessarily come with the right kind of power mm -hmm. she's like no one's listening to Sade no one's doing one no, and like it's just annoying so you just you you weed it out yeah, so yeah. she's not like Hopefully. you guys listen this is my special she's not selling herself mm -hmm. she's being sassy about it and not like giving no none of those cocky guys want to listen to and she's younger than all of them too right so none right. of them really want to give her the chance so I felt bad for her but um I mean I called from the beginning I was like they're they're not going to choose Sade's. Mm -hmm. Whoever they do choose is going is to be okay. Right. And then somehow Gordon Ramsay right. is going to choose Sade's I and like hers that. more. Like, yeah. And just, I love how they were like, oh, it's too salty and right. at it's, the end. Like after it's not even agreeing with Gordon. Right. It's just so yeah. written by the books, just yeah, like yeah, with yeah. Roe and Jennifer. Like, right. And we've talked about this exactly. too. And I've watched this. I don't know about you, uh, but uh, I, Pete, I've always watched the show since the beginning, mm -hmm. since season one. I've yeah. watched every single season. And he does do things kind of predictable. Like every season, some things always happen. Yeah. And that's one of those things where if somebody doesn't get picked and they're pissed about it, then he ends up, you know, I want to see that. I really like that's appealing to my eye. He or somehow whatever. knows right. the one that the was one. looked yeah. over exactly. yeah, that yeah, he yeah. should it's try. It's going to be good. But so, do you really think it really is good? Or is he just trying to create that buzz? He didn't say what? yours would have beaten Tasha. Yeah, they, that's he what I want to hear. He did say yours beat Bryant's. Right. But yeah. he did it not say it would have won it and for I the did, team. And I did notice that. And I think uh, what you were saying, Pete, is good because I think some of that is drama stirring. Yeah. Um, and I think this was a prime Have example to. of that because she's kind of slided on the team already. Yeah. Um, it was just a way for him to taste it. And the thing is, this is what we're watching. So let's say he did taste it and it was horrible. They just edit that part out. Yeah. They yeah. just don't show us. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. But, and, and you made a good point, Jeff, that it wasn't, he never said it was better, you know, uh, than Latasha's. He just said it was better than Bryant's. Whereas in the last episode, he did right. say, if you chose this, it won. you would have won. Exactly. So yeah. just interesting. But, you know, he likes to stir up the pot, you know, as much as. No pun intended. As, exactly. Exactly. Too so, it's too easy on this show. <laughs> it is too easy. It's all about it. Um, so we were just mentioning that. But Latasha and Bryant were the ones that were chosen. And Latasha ended up beating out Bryant to make the red team win. Uh, and they ended up getting, you know, the trip to Vegas. Um, and that's when Frank gives him the love note, which <laughs> was that. Pete, can you like give us a play-by-play -play about that um, that handoff? He like everyone left, and he was just standing there, and it's just like 
this awkward put he put his hand in his pocket uh -huh. and just did one of these weird handshakes just like that like you see on camera <laughs> and just like it didn't even like go smoothly at all and then he's like and then what's this? Sterling <laughs> yeah. was waiting to also shake his hand. Yeah, and then, and couldn't, then couldn't, really. couldn't go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. The was in there. it was <laughs> man. It was just like from a viewer's perspective, you're just like we reround it. Yeah, did we you really yeah. to watch it yeah. just to see it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, man, it was that was hilarious. It was it was bad. It was bad. Um, but in a good way too. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. no, it was great. But I mean, it was great TV just to see that happen yeah. because my whole thing was how is he going to do this? Like, yeah. is he going to like go to his quarters afterwards? Is he going to try? You know what I'm saying? What's going to happen? But he actually did like the okie doke. Like here you go. Like I got to I need to owe somebody twenty dollars. I don't want them to see me. Yeah. So here you go. Man. All right, peace out. Yeah. You know. So it was just it was corny, but. You know, it it was it's it's Frank. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Between Frank and Sterling, it's like it's the greatest thing ever. Yeah. Because they're gonna give you something that you want to see. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Uh. Um. So, uh, lo and behold, which I think was you know Captain Obvious moment, uh, Sade and Bryant got into it mm -hmm. afterwards because of course Sade's upset now because of what Chef Ramsey said. Bryant's not backing down. He's like, I don't really care. Blah blah. You should have stuck up for your dish. You should have been more vocal. You know, he's saying all these different things, which. which I don't want to jump too far into to predictions the next week, but while we're on the topic of Sade and Bryant fighting, this sort of like the the love promos they have for them. Did you did you watch the the promo for next week? Uh, yes, I did. Yeah, they're yeah. like making it seem like they're going to be all in love with each other. Yeah. I saw that. I what? saw that. No yeah. chance. Yeah, you no think that's a hoax just to yeah, get people no excited? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I mean, I think there's something to it. I don't think it's what they're showing us. I think it's something that they are exchanging that, but I think it might be facetious or something that they're joking or something like that. Maybe they're trying to make amends or something. And they're being Ugh. overtly, you know, over the top. Like, okay, we're going to be cool now. I love you. I love you too. Like, you she know. She says how, he is so hot. There's right. no. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's got to be talking about how like, sweaty he right. is. Like, <laughs> exactly. No, no chance. No, I think it's going to be, it's it's not going to be what, it's definitely yeah. not going to be what they're trying to portray. Yeah. It's going to be some twist to it. But I think we'll get into that in predictions. Yeah, no. Yeah, we'll talk about our predictions. Um, they do go, the red team, when they do go to Vegas, they do go to one of Chef Ramsey's, you know, he plugs his restaurant burger, uh, which looked amazing, by looked the way. Bomb. Uh, it looked yeah. really good. I'm a burger fanatic, so um, I would love to go that. I'm actually planning on going to Vegas in a couple of months, so nice. I definitely want to try that out when I go. Um, some bad news, um, Mr. Steve, tough guy Steve, mm -hmm. he hurt his knee. Yeah. Um, but the interesting part is they were moving things around, and it was like a serious injury yeah and what i'm trying to find is, is usually when there's serious injuries on the show like somebody you know has broken their hand before somebody has smashed their foot they'll show what has happened yeah you know the camera's rolling yeah they didn't really show see, how it they happened they didn't show anything and i'm like for that to be as serious as an injury was i just thought it was really interesting that he was hurt that bad but there was nothing of it he's yeah. just like oh my knee hurts i'm sore it's swollen or whatever and then all of a sudden he has to go home like well, he's not necessarily the most in shape guy. I mean, none of them are really in shape. But they're carrying, you know, six hundred pounds, oh, six hundred pounds of ice, a sixty pound halibut, mm -hmm. and you know, when that starts to wear on your back, you know, you can really be if you're not lifting it properly. I mean, you're the yeah, totally lifter. But sure. if you're not lifting properly, mm -hmm. if that weight isn't being distributed in the right way, sure, it could totally mess with your oh, legs. Oh, for sure, for sure. Yeah, you do like a uh, improper like. Uh, step forward and everything like that mm -hmm. and yeah he easily happened the but yeah but I'm, I'm surprised like because they have cameras on them like non-stop so right. how do they not think you it, know show that i right. doubt he like i doubt it was like a one isolated yeah it might it might fell. have just happened just because of just too much work over the day walking but, upstairs yeah. doing it all yeah and totally for sure for sure over time it just swole, that's probably up. what happened i just i was just thinking about it as it was going because again i thought it was i didn't realize he was gonna have to go home because yeah. my whole thing was okay you know he hurt himself or whatever because like you said over time yeah. you know or what have you but just to the tune that he had to go like it was done it was like, a quick it seemed like a quick decision I yeah agree. Chef all right. was like, you're you know, hurt all right see you later buddy you know what's up yeah. you know what happens no, I, now yeah. you can't continue yeah. and also and and pete you can attest to this there's been other people that have been injured on the show yeah and they still continue yeah so i really thought and i don't want to get all like you know conspiracy theory on here but i really thought it was something else 
Like, you know what I'm saying? Because, it, again, it wasn't something that happened, like, you know, that was devastating. Right. It happened over time. It wasn't, it was just like he couldn't recover from it. Yeah. And maybe it was just one of those situations where they were putting off maybe that it was worse and they didn't show us how bad it was. Because maybe. when they looked at him, it could have been something like maybe as a condition, yeah. you know, or something like that. And maybe they just didn't want to disclose that. They trying that. to cover their ass. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Like, you know, I mean, they obviously, you know, be. have waivers and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, things still, that happen. Like, yeah, yeah. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Gordon's just like, you know, you're not even going to win. Just go home now. Right. <laughs> I feel eliminate you at some point. Yeah. Like, just do it just now. This, this just makes things way yeah. easier. You didn't give me a love note. So, yeah. <laughs> so there it is. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I, or I, thought it I was, needed to send two people home right. anyway because I didn't send anyone in last so week. So in the script, it actually yeah. ends up being <laughs> yeah. your next. So yeah. I don't know. I, that's just me. Is. That's just me. I hope he's I okay. Just thought. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I think, uh, and this has happened before, but uh, sometimes when people have gone prematurely, uh, he allows them to come back. Ooh. So it's very possibility that, you know, that could happen in future seasons. Just saying. Yeah. It could happen. Oh, you mean in a future season? In not future in this season. season. Not in this season. Yeah, that oh, okay. yeah they'll let him come back in future seasons. Yeah, that definitely would be fair. So, yeah. Exactly. So we'll see. We'll see. So we want to get into dinner service. Um, and dinner service is kind of, you know, matter of fact, nothing special with the menu. Uh, but they actually have some special guests, some celebrity guests. Mm -hmm. uh, Stuart Copeland is one from the police, drummer from the police, mm -hmm. which is dope. And, of course, Aerosmith front man, Steven Tyler. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I thought that was dope. Um, they're sitting at the chef's table. And um, I just think it's interesting. And I, and I feel like the chef's do such a, a poor job when people are sitting there. And I yeah. and I think, I mean, tell me, I mean, give me your take on it, but I feel like when somebody's watching you, you know what I'm saying, in the kitchen, I feel like you just, you know what I'm saying, like, I, like for me, like, I, I'm not that great of a parallel parker, you know what I mean? <laughs> but I can do it fine by myself. Yeah. But if somebody's such in the car with me, like, I can't, like, I can't, I'll, I'll take 10 minutes yeah. to park on the street, you know what I'm saying? And if, then it's going to be all bad. If someone's waiting for you, yeah. if you're clogging a lane. If, oh, are we <laughs> oh, yeah, no. Maldiva, just, yeah, is, yeah. is that, are, are we hitting a nerve? No, you yeah, know, I was parking today and it's always like, oh, she has the better idea of how to park the car ah. properly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But oh, yeah, okay. it's just, yeah, but I totally agree with you. I actually agree with you, uh, agree with you when you're, I, we had a meal inside a kitchen not too long ago and you know chefs who were right there they were cooking for us i actually got food poisoning that day really? yeah like really bad food poisoning and I, which with all the shit that you eat yeah i know i never get food poisoning to your stomach never the fact that something else made you throw up yeah it's it, crazy well, i don't know yeah yeah the one time i ate in a kitchen and i was so excited for it and then uh -huh. yeah but anyways, yeah, lots of pressure for sure, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, and but I, they, they seem to be loving being in the kitchen. They were just laughing oh, yeah. the whole time. Well, I mean, Steven Tyler, you know, seeing him kind of... And his daughter who wasn't Liv. Right. The other yeah. one. Yeah, the, uh, she's a plus-size model, by oh. the way. Yeah. Well, I was excited because I thought it was the daughter that's in the, the crazy music video with Alicia, uh -huh. Alicia Silverstone. Yeah. Yeah. Which is nice. Great music video. Right, it is. But amazing. that wasn't her. So. Yeah, but I figure that he, of all people, would have a good time. Yeah. He'd have a good time with it. He'd be a good sport. Um, and he'd probably enjoy, like, the crazy drama yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And he seemed to be eating it up. You know, he seemed to be having a good time. Um, speaking of the red team, the red team actually gets off to a really great start. Um, Sterling is on salad again. Now the last time i was like i don't know if they put him on salad again to redeem himself or what because last time he was on salad he was horrible um and so he was messing up back and forth this time he seemed to be doing a good job um the blue team starts off good as well so both teams are starting yeah. off pretty good um and then we'll go back to frank he's messing up on scallops Frankie. horrible Frankie. on scallops um, and then the fish, and yes, then this, exactly. and then this. It was just, uh, it was just, it was just a nightmare in there. Yeah. It was yeah. just, I mean, and then, and I, I feel like when they do a good start, I feel like they, it ends up being like as soon as somebody messes up, then it's like a snowball. Snowball. Yeah, yeah like they could oh, be totally. doing well, and then as soon as somebody messes up, it ends up being a snow so, snowball. Blue team um, just killed it. Dude, Not like I didn't see one mistake. They were smashing. They yeah. just they were such a smooth, was doing well. Aaron was service. doing well. Yeah. 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 Um, Latasha ends up taking over the scallops on the red team. Um, and then we have Frank going back to Frank again. He messes up on salmon. So like, he's on fish. Like how many times? Yeah. Well, at least I counted at least twice. Yeah. It could have even been more. Yeah. Um, but he's just all, he's just, he's just horrible in the kitchen. And yeah. my thing is, I feel like he, he's been there too long. And I think we had this Way conversation a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and we were saying that he, 
basically he talks his way out of I think getting voted in. Mm-hmm. I think he politics really well when they're in deliberations. He's like, oh no, you know, he has this good talk, almost like a politician type. You know, no, 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 no. I, I'm, but I will be better next time. Are we gonna see Frank run for the governor or something? <laughs> yeah, right? You imagine? I don't know. You imagine? I don't, I don't know. Mayor, maybe. He's mayor. gonna, he's gonna write love letters to the to the states. <laughs> speech. Well, he's not I'm getting hired in any kitchens anytime soon. Exactly. So he's gonna yeah. Need to yeah. Do so I think. I think he was well overdue, um, but I think he just got to the point where now, every, as people get eliminated, people are better, and so he's really standing out as being really bad. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So um, the same thing. Yeah. Uh, so Chef uh, Chef Ramsey actually, it's so bad for the red team because of the snowball that happened. They actually take some of the blue team and put them in to help out the red team. Yeah. Which is kind of embarrassing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, totally. it's, it's it's really embarrassing when something like that happens. Um, and then at the end, of course, the red team uh, gets called to uh, deliberate because they are considered the losing team. They have to pick somebody. Um, when he but, tells them to go pick their two, right. I was pissed. Right. And I mean, I was watching with my friends last night and like, we were all pissed. We're like, don't make them do that. Like, why would they have to pick two? Like, who are they going to pick? That's so unfair. Right. Yeah. So. So, but it was interesting that he kind of did that flip, you yeah. know, because a lot of times, um, Pete, I've seen, you know, we just mentioned this earlier, uh, and Jeff, you've seen it already this season, um, where things are, you know, then you know it's going to happen. You yeah. know, you know when he's going to take somebody and switch them over to another team. Yeah. You kind of see it coming because there's uneven. Um, or you know when it's going to be to be continued as far as the show's concerned. Right. Um, in this particular case, I did not see that. I did not see him eliminating Frank right then and there. Did you see that? I personally, I was just like on the inside, I was like, maybe he's just going to boot him out of the kitchen. Like, yeah. you know, it kind of just seemed like, I don't know. I haven't seen the chef go that bad during a service. Or maybe I have. No, I have. But he was just... Yeah, you know, it, it was a really good twist, but I also could have seen him just getting booted during service. I mean, we all knew I wouldn't Frank be was surprised. going home. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just a matter of how. Yeah. How it was going to happen. Yeah. So do you think that he did it that way just for the sake of the show? Or do you think he was really just like, I don't even want to go into delimination, deliberation? I think he was like sending them back as he always does, just kind of like robotic. Just, all right, go uh-huh. send them back. And then as they left, he was like, what the f- am I doing? Right. Like. Get back here! It's obvious who it's gonna be. There was there was like this very very small part of me that was like thinking that oh wait he's not gonna send anyone home no mm-hmm. no did, did he really let did he really fall for that love letter oh, <laughs> like there was like that like really yeah. really small feeling inside right. my head that thought maybe maybe yeah. but yeah it didn't happen <laughs> but he did he did actually address the love letter yep. and he 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 did say that he's like I appreciate it you yep. know I feel like you come from a good place yep. he didn't ridicule him or mock him or anything yep. which you know he could have done <laughs> yeah, um, right <laughs> great TV <laughs> but he did it and he basically he's like look you just you just ain't got it, you know. Yeah. Basically, just laid it out, and I think Frank saw it. I mean, he just no, kept, it, no, he, he didn't. Well, remember afterwards what he was saying? He's like, I can't believe I'm going home. This is not all my time, stuff. dude. I no. What I mean is, <laughs> that's what he said. Yeah, but I'm saying in here, there's no way unless he's just. It's it's oblivious. really hard to tell based on you know the letters that he's writing <laughs> dude, and all this other stuff. It's know, really hard man. to tell what's going on in there. Well, that's true. That's tr- I guess maybe I'm thinking of myself. Yeah, like if I was in his shoes, yeah, I would be like, yo. Um, okay, I, I need to go. I'm, yeah. I'm the worst person here. Yeah. I don't want to go. Yeah, but I, I have to. I go. screwed up. I like, screwed he up. didn't really admit to. Did he really admit he to no, screwing up? No. Well, he never did admit to screwing up. Yeah. Like even when he was up for elimination in previous ones, yeah. he would again put on his suit and tie. And but even after politics. being eliminated, he just sort of said, oh, "Okay, you know, I could have given more, it but was, I did screw up and right. all this other stuff." Like I mean, all the salmon he messed up. Yeah. Es- escallops and salmon yeah. and this and that. Like, yeah, it was just no. And there's been other times he's just. Look lost, and then right, people have yeah. to help him and bail him out. Yeah. I mean that. I'm. I just mean that. I. He should have seen it. Coming. Maybe I should have said it like that. He yeah. Should have seen it coming. No. Whether he figured it out or not, mm-hmm. or whether he felt it, mm-hmm. you know, who knows? But right. according to him, what we saw, it did look like he was like, "Oh, I can't." Yeah. Whatever. Get up out of here. Time for you to go. Peace. Guido's done. Deuces. There it is. So um, that being said, let's get into predictions. Let's predictions. Do that. Let's do that. Ooh. And now, yeah. Spooky. you're after Buzz TV predictions. All right. So, um, Jeff, why don't you start us off because of what you know, what you said earlier about going into what we saw next time with the whole well, dynamic. My initial prediction is that uh, Sade and Bryant are not in love. Okay. But I'm 
think I'm ready to uh, to make a big, big prediction here. Okay, I'm ready. I think the winner of Hell's Kitchen this year is going to be Tasha. Mm. So you're jumping all the way to winner. I'm going to winner. You're going all the way to winner. Going to winner. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Um, Pete, what are your predictions going into next episode? Um, or you can do like, you know, Jeff here and predict the... I know. can't predict a winner. Uh -huh. I haven't seen enough. I'll be honest. I haven't seen all the episodes this season. I've okay. seen I've seen a bunch, but right. I haven't seen them all. So okay. I'm, I can't predict an, uh, a winner. Um, Tasha just like... She's my favorite. Yeah. Uh, like, I mean, uh, she's just, she took over that kitchen like mm -hmm. crazy and just like saved the day and everything. So she's definitely like a front runner. I think she's going to be the one to, one of the ones to contest with. But you just, you just never know with this show. Right. I mean, there's always so many twists and turns. So right. you can never, never predict um, this, you know, every, so many shows out there, especially this show, you know, they'll do a preview for the next show, right? Mm -hmm. But they always want to do something to mess with you so that you think, oh my God, I have to tune in to see what's going on, what's going to happen. So I think, I, I think I'm with you on this one to say that nothing is actually going to happen. They just took, you know, just took different words, different sentences uh -huh. to, to make something actually mm -hmm. happen. Something out of nothing, maybe? Yeah, because... I don't know. I just, I, I just don't see it <laughs> happening. It just doesn't seem real. It doesn't seem real. I no, I agree with you. I think that I, I still want to hold on to that. There's something there, just not what we're seeing. Mm. You know, I'll just put it like that. I don't think they, I, I don't think that they. Something's gonna happen where I think they might make amends of some sort to be just for the sake, not in real life, like, but just for the sake Gordon's of. Gordon's gonna get so sick of their bickering. He's gonna do like a an elementary school project where they have to <laughs> pretend they're husband and wife and that they really love each other. I mean, and it's like you guys have to pretend to love each other maybe i don't know not like that i just i don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think he would ever get i don't down think to he that. would he, he would do that he I've never wants seen him people do that. to fight yeah he wants i mean that's that's the, that's the premise of the show it's hell's yeah. kitchen yeah. it's not heaven's kitchen no you know you want there to be drama yeah. um but i could see something of the nature of look you know let's just stop fighting let's you know let's get through this let's you know win on this team and let's get to black jackets and you know kind of go from there i can right. see that being a case and then them like i said you know doing too much with it or whatever yeah but we'll see next it week. is several weeks in the house so yeah. i mean if they need to they got to bang it out you know just the makeup sex you know <laughs> No, <laughs> I don't think I that at all. Don't even want to think I about that. To really be honest, show? No, I, I no, do not want to show? think about Please, this. Please, by all means, yeah, by all means. But I, as far <laughs> as your predictions uh, with Tasha, and I said about this last week, I think she's definitely a front runner. Yeah, she's probably of everybody. She's been the most consistent because everybody's had these peaks and valleys. Everybody, blue team, red team, both. So I think she's been the only one that's been you know majorly consistent, and she's doing it at the right time. She's elevating herself and being vocal at the right time. So I definitely think. If I'm going to pick somebody now, I would definitely pick Tasha. I realize it's very early to make right. a a winner Absolutely. prediction, but we've we've been playing it safe a little yeah. bit this season, so. Uh, and I can and I, and I will say for go. sure, I definitely know she'll be in the top two. Absolutely, and Fernando she'll be in the top is my two. is my is my runner-up. Okay, okay, so. interesting. Um, but I do want Saying to, it now. yeah, before we close out the show, I definitely want to talk a little bit to, uh, about Mr. Furious Pete. Um, so glad that you're here on the show with us. And I just want you to just kind of let us know what you're into, what you're about. Obviously, you know, a huge YouTube following, yeah. uh, competitive eating. Um, how did you get started? Like, what are you doing? Are you just hungry all the time? What's going on? And what <laughs> makes you so furious? <laughs> I'm always hungry. No, you know what? On a regular basis, I can't say I'm that furious, but you put food in front of me. I get furious. I get furious and I eat it really fast. Uh, it's funny, yeah, I uh, my channel, what I do online is actually a combination of actually fitness and crazy eating stunts and I combine them into one magical, magical masterpiece <laughs> where, uh, yeah, I just, I, uh, I do what men love to do. They like to get buff and work out and then like to eat, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, uh, that's, that's the premises. Um, I started this randomly. I went out for breakfast after a night of drinking with the boys and uh, went out to a breakfast place and one uh, one of my buddies challenged anyone at the table to try and break some record. And I was eating like a bunch of dishes of breakfast food. Mm -hmm. And he asked what the record was in the restaurant. I was eating two massive plates of breakfast food. And I, uh, I doubled that record there and then, not even thinking hungover or whatever. And then... <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. Nice. After that, just started posting videos on YouTube. Uh, that's how I got recognized. I broke a bunch of world records. Uh, you broke world records. I broke world records. Wow. Um, what, you what, have what, nine you, world records. I have correct? eleven Guinness 11? World Records right now. You have currently eleven. What? Yeah, eleven Guinness World Records. So Can you I'm name a, at least like one or two of them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have the fastest time to eat a twelve-inch pizza with a knife and fork, thirty-two seconds. Oh my gosh! Okay. Yeah, so that, that that's the problem is knife and fork because right. you can't use your hands and right. all this other right. stuff. Um, we had uh, fastest time to eat a raw onion. Got that one. Yeah, that one was fun. Um, what else did we have? Ferro Rocher's uh, guzzling olive oil. That's not a wait, 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 wait. How much did you cry or tear up with the onion? Um, that one was bad. You know what? It's it's funny. That was my first it's Guinness World Record. Crushed. Yeah, uh, that is the worst part ever. That's why I will, smell? I will never do that record again because what, is, what happens? Your whole body smells like an onion for like two, three days. Like you sweat out no onion, way. you breathe, you like uh. everything feels like an onion. And that's why I actually don't like onions anymore. I like used to love that, onions. Yeah, after that, I'll, I'll cooked ones I'll eat, but raw, I just can't Not do happening. it. It's just, it messed with my head. Wow. It sucks. Um, but yeah, guzzling olive oil, that was awful. I've eaten pounds of butter. I've eaten like the world's spiciest things. I've chugged Jack like, yeah, well, for Guinness. Yeah, I've chugged energy drinks. Um, I've just done insane things that most humans should never do. But for whatever reason, you guys on YouTube like to watch for some reason. I do not know why, but hell, if you like it, I'll keep doing it. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm a weird entertainer. Now, <laughs> as as far as some of these world records go, do you like? Are you reading a book and go, "Oh, this guy did it. I can do it faster." Or are you like with the onion, for example? Mm -hmm. Are you like I'm aware this exists mm -hmm. and I'll go after it? Yeah. Or are you just like doing it and someone's like, "Oh, dude, by the way, that was the fastest time." Yeah. Well, I mean, initially, like I, I had been doing videos for a very long time, and my fans were like, "Dude, do Guinness World Records, do this, do this," oh. and they like I looked online, I saw what records there were. There were a number of ones that I could do at home and like record everything properly. You have to have a number of cameras and all this other right. stuff. So oh. I tried it and I broke it right away, and I was like. <laughs> All right, wow. sweet. And then, uh, yeah, I've worked with Guinness many times. I've gone to the headquarters and broken a bunch of records there. Wow. So it's been fun. So with Guinness, you can actually do them at home, like you said, and record them? There's a couple that you can. Uh, uh -huh. There's obviously a bunch where it's like everything has to be so precise because, right. you know, it has to be super fair, right? right. You know, so that everyone doesn't break records. So right. Like you can't wait. have... Uh... You can't do plastic forks and spoons. You'd have to do or knives. You'd have to do uh, metal ones. Instead. I mean, obviously with metal ones, it's easier, right? Yeah. I remember I did uh, the first time I broke the the record for a twelve inch pizza. I had a plastic knife, a fork, and then they gave me like a butcher's <laughs> knife because they didn't have any knives. What? So it's like it, it was so ridiculous. Are you serious? Yeah, it was ridiculous. That is crazy. It was ridiculous, but it was a lot of fun. Yeah. So what would you say? I mean, you've been doing this. You said since uh, I think when we were talking earlier, since oh seven. Yeah, I, I discovered. In 07, uh, I got asked to come down and eat in Eating Contest California in 08. So I became a professional competitive eater there. I won that contest, my first contest. I won 20 in a row after that wow. um, in the span of like two years. And then uh, I've done about 100 to date. But I don't really con I don't really do as many eating competitions anymore. I focus on YouTube, Guinness yeah, World YouTube. Records. Uh, I've hosted a German television show for the past five years. Wow. It's a world culinary travel show. So I, uh, I kind of just, you know, to be honest, competitive eating contests, they don't really pay much. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's like, for example, you think of a contest, they'll pay you 500 bucks or a thousand bucks, but you have to get to that contest right. mm -hmm. and you have to win in right. order to get paid. To you get know, that. well, initially when I was winning, everything was fine, right. but, um, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's not, you know, you can't survive on it. It's not good long-term. It's funny. I got my, uh, I went to school for engineering. I got my master's in engineering Shut and now up. I'm doing YouTube and eating <laughs> and my parents are proud. <laughs> well, what I don't understand is how does somebody that breaks the records for eating the world's largest pizza then also teach people how to get in shape? It's just, you know, I teach people that it's all about balance. You know, I feel, find that, especially in the fitness world, especially when, uh, you know, the New Year's resolution comes, people get so anal, people get so strict, and that's why they fail. Uh, that's why people fall off, you know, their diets and all their goals and everything right. like that, because they don't have that balance. Don't They don't, you know, treat themselves to going out and having fun because, mm. you know, I, it's cliche as this as I you know as this is we only live once we have to enjoy it you know yeah. there are obviously limits to that mm -hmm. you you know you Absolutely. can't 
go out and party every single night and, you know, drink or, you know, eat whatever you want. But, you know, doing it once a week isn't going to kill you. And in fact, I think it's just going to benefit you, you know, in the long run, because, you know, if you want to live a healthy lifestyle, it's, it's a long, it's a lifelong commitment. It's right. not just day to day, you know, thing. So um, a lot of people online will think that I eat the way I do every all the time, all the time 24 seven, mm -hmm. they're like, Oh, yeah. you get a 20 pound burger for right. dinner every day. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and then no. obviously, if I did, I would look the part exactly. And uh, I probably wouldn't be here right now. Right. So right. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a fun little thing that we do now. Um, is this something, this is all you do now? Like, is it to the point where this is, you can really sustain yourself just doing the competitions and the, with YouTube and everything that you have? Yeah, we on? have YouTube. I have a merchandise line, furiouspeat.com. Uh -huh. We have a lot of stuff on there. Um, I host TV shows. I work with a lot of fitness companies. Mm -hmm. I co-own a few there and then I'm sponsored by companies. So oh, wow. this is my, uh, this is my job right now. Gotcha. This is, you this, branded yourself. Yeah, this is what I do. I have a lot of other ideas to go with it, but mm -hmm. yeah, this is this is what I, you know, I'm I'm, I'm lucky with it. You know, mm -hmm. I'm I like to say I'm milking it for all it's worth. <laughs> yeah. uh, I have Absolutely. I have a degree Do to it. fall on, but right. I don't want to obviously. No, if right. I, if I can, you know, my goal is at the end of the day is to just motivate others to to live a fun lifestyle, healthy and fun lifestyle. Absolutely. So if I can do that, I think uh, I think I've I've done my uh, mission and yeah. Okay, cool. so I have one more question. Yep. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Another clap. I got yeah, two. two. Yes. So of everything that you can recall in this last time that you've eaten um, in a challenge or what have you, yeah. what has been what you would call the worst that you would, I mean, I know you talked about the onion, like you wouldn't do that again. Yeah. But what was, I, I say maybe not the worst, but the most challenging, like what like almost, like I can't do this. Like you got to the breaking point. What? Oh, well, yeah, I've done I've done challenges where it's like, yeah, there's one that was called the Eagles Deli Challenge. It was uh, Eagles Deli. Yeah, it was, there's one. It's like if you finish this challenge, you get to name it, the burger gets named after you. Okay. And there was fifteen hundred people that had tried it before me and failed. And fifteen hundred. Uh, fifteen hundred. Yeah, this is in Boston. OK. Um, and uh, it was five pound burger with 20 pieces of bacon, 20 pieces of cheese and five pounds of fries. Uh, if you've never pictured five pounds of fries, Jesus. you need to see this. It's a tray like this. Right. And that's that's what was killer. Like you have an hour to eat it or 45 minutes to eat it an hour. And uh, I finished the burger in like eight minutes or something like that. It was mm -hmm. fine. You know, I got that down. No fine. problem. Nothing. No problem. No fine. problem at all. Yeah. So. And then we were focusing on the fries. The fries took me so long and it was just like, I was like shaking and, and people around me were just like, oh man, they were just flipping out. And like, and it's funny, I had driven for like 12 hours prior to that to get there. Prior to yeah, get there. To get, yeah, and uh, so it was, just had no preparation, just went in, went in at it. And then, uh, yeah, it was, that was one meal that I'm not gonna lie, I couldn't keep in. I just like, I finished it and, and then I was like, all right, all right. Thank you for the round of applause. Yeah, I yeah. am going to the washroom. Yeah, yeah it was just, oh. there was like for the most part, you know, a lot of these challenges, a lot of people will ask me, hey, can you keep it in and all this other uh -huh. stuff? And for the most part, I can, but that was one that right. just couldn't, couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. Couldn't but, do it. you know, when it, when it comes to tough challenges, really, the hottest things in the world, uh -huh. those are really hard to get down. Yeah. Um, yeah the Warheads those, challenge. I warheads. Watched. My tongue was bleeding. That brutal. Couldn't eat, bleeding? Couldn't, yeah, bleeding after 50 of them, but I ate 150, so I ate another 100 after it was bleeding, so that was very painful. Don't oh watch God. it. <laughs> okay, I don't. Yeah, that video does well online. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> How long did it take you to, uh, to your tongue to heal from that? I couldn't eat solid food for three days. For yeah. three days. Yeah, it was terrible. Wow. It, was, it wasn't a good idea, I don't think. Yeah. But um, at the end of the day, it's one of my most watched videos. Is it really? <laughs> yeah. It really is. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. People love it. That's People love crazy. It. Yeah. Well, you are um, an anomaly um, in the best possible way. And uh, again, I appreciate you being on the show. Thank you very um, much for having me. This has been Hell's Kitchen After Show. And man. I just can't wait until next week, and I we know. can see if there's a love connection. Yeah, you know, maybe. maybe I wish not. we could get some of Frank's salmon and scallops to see if you could get that. Done. <laughs> I don't know, if, <laughs> man. There, there's food poisoning again. <laughs> right there it is. There it is. But again, I'm your host, Lim Gonzalez. Um, you can find me on social media at the Poet Saint, and that's on Twitter and Instagram. Jeff, where can they find you, sir? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Jeff underscore Therm. Tweet us your comments, questions. We'll talk about it next week. And Mr. Furious P, where can they find you? You can find me on Twitter. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, all at Furious Pete and uh, FuriousPete.com as well. Awesome. Thanks for and having me again. Thanks, Mel Diva, for holding it down for us yeah. as well. Woo! Yeah. All right, y'all.
We'll see you later. Good night. Cool. Peace. From executive producers Maria Manunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.